Ah, bonjour. <laughs> All right, so I just got done drinking some of the local moonshine. It's called Ruguagua. And I'm in a good mood. But I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk all the way up this road. I think it takes about 30, 40 minutes. And that's gonna take me to the border with Congo. And maybe I can talk my way in. I doubt it, but who knows? Let's see. 3DC? Okay, to Rwanda. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Il y a des Congolais qui habitent ici aussi? Oui, il y a des Congolais qui habitent aux alentours aussi à ce pays. Ah, ok. Beaucoup? Beaucoup. Yeah, parce que le Congo, euh, c'est là. Oui, il est là-bas. C'est très proche. Donc, euh, le Congo et le Rwanda partagent le lac qui vaut. Ah, ok. Oui. Et maintenant, c'est impossible de traverser la frontière Donc, pour entrer si. en, eh, en Congo? Oui, c'est possible. Je veux y aller. Eh, en passant par le lac. Ah oh, oui, oui, je, je veux traverser le lac. Oui. Eh, donc il y a des formalités. Eh. C'est possible. C'est possible? Oui, oui. Ah. Oui. Tu veux dire illégalement? C'est possible. Eh. C'est possible. Oui. C'est possible de descendre là-bas là oui mm. à côté du lac donc oh, si, tu, si tu veux tu peux descendre ok mm. je, je peux descendre mais mm. je peux me mourir aussi mm. <rire> mm. il me semble un peu dangereux on va voir yeah, thanks. Mais, mais après que je suis prêt à tester quelque chose yeah. <rire> à moi ok Et... allez-y ok merci, merci. Alright, if he says I can go there, fuck it, I'm gonna go there. We can get down this. Hoping not to sprain my ankle though. Ouais, euh, je, veux, je vais prendre beaucoup d'attention. Ouais. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing. Easy little walk here. Voilà le lac. Oh. oh, that is a goddamn active beehive. We don't want to go there. Ah. And here we go. And now, free of charge, without having to pay some resort a ton of money, we have a view of Lake Kivu. Ichiyaga Cha Chivu. So this lake, Lake Kivu, is effectively the border between Congo and Rwanda. It runs all along the border, and only at the northern tip and the southern tip you have a small land border that people would use to cross between the two countries. Well, at least they used to, because ever since early 2020, with the pandemic, those borders have been basically closed, and it's very hard to cross. Congo and Rwanda, along with Burundi, three countries colonized by Belgium have a very shared and tragic history. And surprisingly, in recent times, it's actually been Rwanda that's had more influence on Congo than the other way around. Hello. Say hi. Yeah, there you go. Wapi <laughs> Yeah. For uh, Mohanda? Mm. Okay, very good. Okay, in Jesus' channel. Oof. 
on that. Rwanda is incredibly beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful places I've seen in the world. Now granted, this area here has a bunch of tourist resorts because of the lake right there. But pretty much anywhere in the country, just because of the natural geography, it's just a series of hills. You have just highways that were built running through them. And as you drive along through the country, you're just driving past these massive cliffs overlooking these grand landscapes. It's pretty amazing. And what's crazy is that if you meet a critic of Rwanda, the thing that they're most likely to say is that, yeah, sure, they did a good job with Kigali, but if you go out into the countryside, you're going to see just how actually undeveloped the country still is. And to be honest, that hasn't been my experience at all. I mean, you were with me when we went out to that random village to have some beers. That's not a tourist destination at all. And it was still beautiful. Sure, yeah, there's no paved roads, but there was a paved road on the highway going right past it. It's, honestly, it's pretty amazing what Rwanda has done in the past 25 years or so. It's uh, Mzitu. You want, you want help? I help you? Uh, yeah. Oh, Kuku? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what is it? So, Aho, it's um, Munsi. Munsi. Yeah. Yeah. Aho, it's, it's easy. Beraco, Beraco Mesh. Beraco Mesh. Yeah. Come with Brosiri. Yeah. Okay, so. Ah, no. You got down? Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. Okay. Let's so, bye bye. So, bye. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You have a good day. There's just like a soldier up there in that guard post. Probably bored out of his mind. I asked him before if there were any like Congolese that come like swimming across the lake to try to sneak into Rwanda, but he said he doesn't even get that. <laughs> I don't know how he stays awake. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do I'm it. In this oh, nice, nice. Yeah, you too. Over the past 60 years, this area, these borderlands between Rwanda and Congo, has been almost like a highway for refugees. At times, Rwandan refugees fleeing persecution against the Tutsis or the Hutus depending on the time, and going into Congo. Or at other times, Congolese fleeing civil war, massacres, and fleeing into Rwanda. Both countries have changed a lot, sometimes getting better, sometimes getting worse. You know, as crazy as Congo is now, as hard as it is to believe, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, over that lake in Goma, in Congo, you had a resort town. It was a very desirable place to be. Mobute Sesi Seko, the dictator of Congo at the time, he had a house there. It's where you go on vacation if you were Congolese. And if you were Rwandan, especially if you were Tutsi at the time, thinking about the persecution you were experiencing, that was the place you wanted to go. 
but times have changed quite a bit since then. parents thought you'd ask for money too. Okay, I'm getting out of here. You know, I think the only thing that really annoys me in Rwanda, as we walk past the Rwanda military base, <laughs> besides like the curfew stuff and you know all the COVID guidelines, I mean, I could see a point in that at least. But the thing that surprised me and really annoys me is just how many people here ask me for money or just different things. And especially the children, which leads me to believe that there's just widespread <laughs> practice of Rwandan parents telling their kids like, hey, if you see a white face, go ask for money. And it's getting kind of annoying to the point where I don't even want to say hi to kids anymore because almost every single one asks me for money. I really got to salute Rwanda for the infrastructure here. I mean, you know, not only do you have obviously a completely modern and well taken care of highway right here going from Jisenye, the major town in the region all through the resort area. But you also have this sidewalk meant for pedestrians. So I'm able to comfortably walk the entire route all the way to Jisenye. I love Tanzania and Kenya, but I didn't see anything like this in Zanzibar or Diani. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jisenye? Ziri Afu? Jisenye. Wait, where's Jisenye? Gisenye. Gisenye. Yeah, Gisenye, yeah. Gisenye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pronunciation. Are they there? Okay, okay. Oh, no, of course. Sorry. Little did I know up until now, I've been butchering the pronunciation of the major city. I was calling it Gisenye, but it's Gisenye. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Over there, it says that it is a party boat and bar. I wonder if that's still open in uh, COVID era Rwanda. Uh, party boat? Yeah. Yeah? Ubu, uh, Hari party? Yeah. It's yeah, the Konyo and Zoga? Yeah, there is uh, many beer, different beer. Okay, wh yeah. when? Even, if, even now if you want. <laughs> oh, even now we go on the boat? Yeah. Okay, oh, mm. I go to Gisenia first and I oh, come back. Okay. We go on the boat tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, okay, all okay. cool. Hi, um, um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Got it. Yeah, thank you. 25 years ago, after the end of the Rwandan Civil War and the genocide, there was a conflict between Rwanda and Congo, the DRC, and it was mainly driven by the fact that the death squads, the perpetrators of the Rwandan genocide, these groups known as the Imherahamwe, they fled across the border into Congo, 
and they hid there so that they could continue to launch attacks against the now newly built Rwanda. And of course, this led to reprisals from the Rwandan military going into Congo. The conflict is way more complicated than that. It's crazy complicated, actually. <laughs> and uh, if you're a fan of history, I definitely recommend reading a few books about the Congolese Civil War, the Rwandan Civil War. All of this stuff is really fascinating, albeit a little bit depressing. All right, we're now coming into uh, the city limits of Kisenya, which means we're gonna get a little more serious with wearing the face mask. And uh, then we're gonna find a moto taxi that will just take me to the border. Hey. Um, in the Chaga Fuja Frontier, here, Congo. Congo. Yeah. No filming? Okay, okay. So I gotta turn the camera off. I'm just gonna quickly find out if I can somehow get into Congo. I doubt it, but let's find out. checkpoint and not surprisingly it's impossible to get a visa. Fun fact, the DRC is actually one of the hardest countries for an American to get a visa to. I basically actually have to fly all the way back to the US and then do a whole bunch of steps just to get it. Apparently previously, like before COVID, there was like an easier visa you could get just to go into like Goma across the border from Rwanda for like a day. But that's all shut down now. And uh, now it's raining, so I'm just seeking shelter here. I'm a Kuru. So, yeah. You're Rwandan, Congolese? I'm a Rwandan. Oh, Rwandan, okay. You? American. America? Yeah. Which state? Uh, New York. New York. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you going to Congo now? Uh, or are you coming back? I come back. Oh, okay, okay. That's your test? Is it your test? Uh, my test, my COVID test. COVID test, okay, okay. Is, is it easy to go to Congo? Ah, uh, it's easy. Okay, you just need a test? Uh, you can show the test and your passport. Okay. Okay, and you do what you do business in Congo? Business. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to visit, but I can't. Uh, the, the, the first will come there. Yeah. In the Shaka Gutenberg. Uh, I, I, I can't. Yeah. Because uh, I'm American. 
Yeah. No visa. You have passport? I have yeah. passport, but they won't give me a visa. Visa. Yeah. I need to go to America. What's, what's your name? Milka. Milka. Okay. Milka from Rwanda. Uh, Not from Congo. Rwanda. <laughs> a few people here at the border but just got caught in the storm not a good environment to start conversations so I'm just gonna go back and get to my hotel back at the uh, moderately priced hotel overlooking the lake and it's still raining ah. So yeah, to be honest, I didn't really believe that I'd be able to get into the DRC without a visa, without anything. Uh, but it was interesting to see the actual border checkpoint because there was actually a lot of people. There was a lot of foot traffic going back and forth, uh, both Rwandans and Congolese. And from my understanding, basically, Congolese can still come into Rwanda as long as they have like the right test and basically that's it I think and they come to just do business for the day and then they go back Goma, the city right over the border is much bigger than Gisenyi or anything here on the Rwandan side Man. still a really weird feeling to know that I'm in a place where I could just leave my computer and all my stuff in this room with the door unlocked and I could uh, pretty confidently come back and know that it's going to be here. All right, so I don't, this is pretty much like an open secret, but the DRC is actually the country in Africa that I would most like to visit. I know, I know, you know, <laughs> the country with all the tragedy, the deaths, the problems. I, I've read a few books about the place. And I find it to be just pretty interesting. There's a lot of different languages, a lot of different ethnic groups. It would be very interesting. But it seems like getting the visa here while I'm in Africa is basically impossible. I'll have to wait until I go back to America. So maybe that's something we'll do next year. Mais Congo, j'irai. On se verra. So yeah, I guess... This maybe hasn't been like the most eventful vlog, but it was a pretty nice walk. This area is beautiful. I completely recommend if you come to Rwanda, you can definitely come over here as well. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna hang out, actually rest <laughs> for the day, and get ready to join my uh, Ruguagua buddies tomorrow for a little hike. So. And on that hike, I might just get to actually see Congo. <laughs> so, you guys take care. And, uh, so, bye.